Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Have you heard the strange tales of The Whistler? I'm the Whistler. I know John Blake isn't here. I know because he's disappeared. I know you're trying to keep it out of the press because you think he's been kidnapped. Another Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the Whistler... Know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the amazing story of the penalty. Young Alan Harper stands at the window of his small office and stares gloomily out over the city as the lights flicker on in the dusk. Alan has trouble. Perhaps he should have kept his job as a private detective. Perhaps he shouldn't have taken the law course. For he hasn't had a single client since the day he passed the bar examination. Better to give up and go back to the detective agency. Then the door opens and the figure steps into the dimly lighted room. Are uh, you the attorney? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm Alan Harper. I have a little business for you. Business? Oh, what kind of business? I want you to draw a will and uh, later deliver a letter for me. A will? Oh, yes, yes of course, of course. Uh, do you know who I am? Well, I, I've certainly seen you before, but I, I just can't place you. I'm John Blake, president of the Plymouth Building and Loan. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I've seen your picture many times. Yes. But uh, why have you come to me? You have a staff of the best attorneys in town. I know, but because of the... Well, the peculiar nature of the business at hand, I prefer an unknown, a, a lawyer who had no previous interest in me or my affairs. I see. Yes. And also one who was not doing any too well. Well, I'll have to admit that you picked a good example. In a few moments, you'll have guessed what I have in mind. You'll know why I can't have my own attorneys handle this. Why not? You have no personal interest in me, Harper. This is a cold business proposition, and I'll make it worth your while. Yes, when I walk out of here, I want you to forget the whole thing for a few days. Agreed? Very well. Then take down what I say and I'll sign it. To my daughter, Anita Blake, I leave all my property, personal and real, including the painting of her mother, Marcia Blake. This will supersedes any and all instruments of this nature previously drawn. Yes. That's all. Oh? Yes. I'll sign it now. Now, uh, uh, here is a letter addressed to my brother, Henry, in this city. He's recently returned after 25 years in Australia. Though he has written me several times lately, we've been estranged all these years over a situation which this letter will clear up. Very well, Mr. Blake, but, um, but just what... Uh, uh, no questions, Mr. Harper, please. I I want you to keep the will and letter. You'll know what to do with them when the time arrives. Are you... I mean... Mr. Blake, are you afraid of being murdered? No, Harper, there was a time. Oh, but not now. Sounds a little crazy to me. Here you are, young man. Your fee. What? what? A thousand dollars. 
Oh, but that's most unusual. Why why all that? I'm paying you that much because I know you need it badly, and your need will make you keep our agreement that you'll forget all this for a few days and say nothing to anyone. You're planning to commit suicide, Mr. Blake. And what if I were? Then it's my duty to stop you. What would my death matter to you? People die every day, commit suicide or murder. It means nothing to you. Yes, but this is different. Mr. Harper, I'm not planning to commit suicide. You're sure? Yes, I assure you. So if you don't care to go through with the agreement, I, I'll take the money back and find someone else. No. No, I believe you, Mr. Blake. I'll keep the agreement. I, I've got to. Very well. Goodbye, Harper, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Blake. <laughs> Young Alan Harper sits pondering over the strange event. The will, the letter. He drops the role of attorney, and his mind works from the angle of the detective. What a strange situation. Another day has passed, and toward noon, Anita Blake talks to her fiancé, Wilbur Martin. I'm sorry to call you out here, Wilbur, but I just had to talk to you. What is it, Anita? What's wrong? It's about father. Your father? He left the office late yesterday afternoon, but he didn't come home. Well, maybe he went to his club. But no, Wilbur. I mean, he didn't come home at all. He still hasn't come. I called his club. I called every place. Oh, Wilbur, I'm terribly worried. Why? Well, father's been acting strangely of late. He's so morose. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? I'm afraid something's happened to him. Anita, maybe, maybe he's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? But if that had happened, wouldn't someone contact us by this time? Maybe not. Have you called every place that he might be? Oh, yes. Have you called the police? No, I wanted to wait till I talked to you. Have you called his brother, Hillary? No, I haven't, but I don't think he'd be there. You know about that situation. They haven't been on good terms for years and years. We've only seen each other once since Uncle Hillary came back from Australia. Yes, I know. He's a strange sort of person, that Hillary. I've only seen him once the time I went to his apartment with you, but... He's certainly strange. I know, but perhaps that's only natural. What was it that caused them to become so bitter towards each other? I really don't know. Father never told me. But I think it had something to do with a girl they were both in love with. Yeah. Uh, did your father know Hillary was coming back to the state? Of course. Hillary wrote him several times, but Father didn't answer him. Is your uncle Hillary well fixed? Certainly. He became wealthy in Australia. What are you trying to say? Are you sure he made money over there? Of course. Father told me that many times. Well, your father could have been misled about Hillary being well off. Well, but I don't know what you mean. I think Uncle Hillary is all right. I rather like him. And I don't care what the differences were between them. Are you inferring that Uncle Hillary... No, I'm not inferring anything. I'm just asking. Uh, why not call Hillary and ask him to come over here? All right. Don't tell him about your father. Just, just ask him to come over here as soon as possible. You're all wrong about this, Wilbur. I know now what you're thinking. But I'm sure you're wrong. You call him, Anita. And let him think your father is here. Then, can we talk to him? We can call the police. Wilbur is very clever. He may be right about Hillary. Maybe Hillary knows something about his brother's strange disappearance. But then, Hillary is clever, too. Quite clever. A half hour later, Hillary arrived. What on earth is this all about? I'm awfully glad you could come so soon, Uncle Hillary. Is John Neal? Oh, well, you remember Wilbur Martin, Uncle, my fiancé. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, what's wrong with you two? What's happened? Uh, Mr. Blake, uh, how long since you've seen your brother? I've been about uh, four or five months, shortly after I came here from Australia. Wilbur, I... Would uh, you like to have a few words with me? Oh, certainly. What's happened? Wilbur, stop this nonsense. Uncle Hillary, father is... Well, he isn't here. He's disappeared. What? Disappeared? Yes, and Wilbur thought maybe you knew where he was. Oh, I see. Well, Wilbur, I don't know. Uh, I know that now, but now I just want to make sure. Oh, don't let your imagination run away with you, Wilbur. Father didn't come home last night from the office. I've called every place. Every place. Well, uh, what do you think's become of him? Well, he's been acting very strangely. I'm afraid that he's... He's committed suicide. Suicide? But Wilbur thinks that somebody may have kidnapped him for ransom. We could both be right. He could have been murdered. I suggest that you call the police at once and check the hospital, the morgue, every place. Yes, yes, of course. You call them, Wilbur, please. I can't. Yes, you're calling. I'll attend to it. Wilbur. 
Alba calls the police and the hospital and the morgue. But he learns nothing of value. Two days pass by and still not a sign of John Blake or his body. Then Alan Harper, the attorney, visits the John Blake home. Come in, Mr. Harper. Thank you, Miss Blake. This is my fiancé, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin? What is it, Mr. Harper? Is uh, your father here, Miss Blake? But... My father? But... Why, no. Uh, what did you want to see him about, Harper? Why, I wanted to see him on some uh, personal business. Mm. Well, why don't you try to find him at his office? I did, but he isn't there. He hasn't been there for several days. Just what is your business, Miss Harper? Uh, why do you want to see Mr. Blake? I don't want to see Mr. Blake. Because I don't think he's here. I came to see Miss Blake. What do you want, Mr. Harper? Who are you? I'm a detective. Detective? Yes. Go on, Mr. Harper. I know John Blake isn't here. I know because he's disappeared. I know you're trying to keep it out of the press because you think he's been kidnapped. We call the police. We ask them to keep it quiet. Yes, yes, I know that. But I'm, I'm working in the background. Well, if you don't think he's here, then where do you think he is? I think he's dead. Dead? Why do you think that? Just what do you know, Mr. Harper? Oh, here you are, Anita. I wanted to talk to you in... Mr. Blake. What? Uh, And who is this? Mr. Blake. Who else? You you seem startled, young man. What's wrong? Oh, yes, I am, sir. I... I, I thought what that... What did you think? Well, I, I thought you were dead, sir. That is... He's well, a detective. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Blake, but... Well, I guess curiosity got the better of me. What are you talking about? Well, you remember. The agreement. What agreement? Wait a minute. Do you know who you're talking to? Yes, yes of course. John Blake. No, Mr. Harper. This is my uncle. My father's brother, Hillary. Hillary? Hillary Blake? Yes, my father's twin brother. Twin? John and Hillary were twins? Of course. I didn't know that. And apparently you know my father, John Blake. Yeah. What did you know about him? You know where he is? Well, I... Excuse me just a moment. I've I've never been so startled in all my life. Yes. Yes, now that I look at him, now that I recall his speech, there's a difference. And why do you think John Blake is dead, Mr. I've just come from police headquarters. You mean he's been murdered? No. No, not murdered. From all indications, he committed suicide. Suicide? Are you sure? (laughs) I was afraid of this. This morning, a hat and coat and overcoat were found on the river dock. In the coat was a typewritten copy of a will made the day before yesterday. The hat bears the initials J.B. (laughs) There was a will, you say? Yes. Could you identify the uh, hat and coat, Miss Blake? Of course. Very well. Come in, Sergeant. This is Sergeant Hamlin. Do you uh, recognize this coat and hat, Miss Blake? Yes. Yes, I do. They, they were fathers. Oh, well, well. Yes, I, I can't understand it. But the hat and coat are not conclusive evidence. What about the will found in the park? Uh, show them the will, Sergeant. You read it, Will, but... Yes, to my daughter, Anita Blake, I leave all my property, personal and real, including the painting of her mother, Marcia Blake. This will supersedes any and all instruments of this nature previously drawn. But no signature. I have the original. Here you are. It's the original and signed. Where did you get this, Harper? Look at the signature of the witness. Alan Harper. You witnessed the signature? I did. And how do you explain that, Mr. Harper? Because I typed the will for John Blake the night he disappeared. He signed it, and I witnessed the signature. But why should he come to you, a detective? It's true that I'm a detective, but I'm also an attorney at law. But Mr. Blake has his own attorney. Nevertheless, he came to me to draw this will. And if I hadn't recognized him from his pictures, I wouldn't have witnessed the signature. You recognize your father's signature, Anita? Yes. Is it his all right? I still can't understand the reason for his doing such a thing. He did everything in the world, everything to live for money, position. He must have been out of his mind. Well, I admit he did act very strangely, but he seemed to be rational enough. But this still isn't proof that he did. There's no body, no proof that he committed suicide. The body may not be found for days, but this evidence at hand certainly indicates that a body will be found eventually. 
Maybe not, Mr. Harper. It's possible they could have... Uh, what do you think? Mm, nothing. Miss Blake, in a way, I blame myself for your father's death. How do you mean? While he was dictating the will, I had a premonition he was planning to kill himself. When I confronted him with my suspicion, he was able to convince me that he had no such intention. It's obvious now why he came to me. Why? He wanted someone who didn't know him personally. His own attorneys would have been able to see through his plan and prevent his carrying it out. But why did he make this new will if he'd already made one? Yes, uh, that's what I'd like to know. Well, I'm still not convinced that he committed suicide. No? Well, maybe this will help. Here's the letter he asked me to, uh, to uh, deliver to Hillary Blake. A letter? To me? Yes. He said it would clear up a few things. Huh. Well. well. What does it say, Uncle? Well, it, uh, it says several things. Things he'd never have said unless he were going to die. Suppose you read it, Wilbur. Yes. Hillary. For 25 years now, jealousy and bitterness have kept us apart. I know why you stayed over there in Australia all these years. I know you loved Martha, and she was rightfully yours. But I loved her, too. And I couldn't go on without her. I know you despised us both all these years, and I pretended to despise you. I had to pretend because I lied to Martha. I told her you were engaged to a woman in Australia. Martha is innocent. I was to blame. When Marcia died last year, you wrote that you were coming back. I knew that your resentment had faded, but I didn't answer you. I've kept away from you because I just couldn't face it. I told you all this because things have happened, which you will learn soon enough, that have decided me to close my book and write for me. I have made a new will leaving everything I possess to Anita. Anita is young. I beg of you to watch after her as though she were your own. Which, but for myself, she might well have been. Forgive me. John. Well, this certainly indicates suicide. But what does he mean by things have happened? That this place is the motive for which we just have to wait. Yes. And that, the body. Everyone seems to be convinced that John Blake has committed suicide. That is, everyone except Wilbur Martin. But still, the body has not been found. <laughs> then, one morning, four days later, Alan Harper calls Anita and Hillary to police headquarters. Morning, Miss Blake. Mr. Blake. What is it, Mr. Harper? Uh, have, uh, have you found John? I hope you don't mind my coming along, Mr. Harper. No. No, not at all, Miss Mark. What's happened? They found a body this morning on the rocks at the mouth of the river. It's rather badly bruised and cut. And, well, it's in a bad condition, but I think you should. Oh, uh, I know I... how you feel, Miss Blake, but I'm afraid it's necessary. Very well. I'll be all right. May I come through? Please do. This way, please. Here we are. <laughs> What do you say, Miss Blake? Oh, it's awful. Now, now, get hold of yourself, Nita. Please, you must. <laughs> yes, I suppose. And you, Mr. Blake? Well, it's certainly hard to say. It looks like it might be John, but was there no name for identification on this body? No, sure. Father not. never would. <laughs> there was nothing to pursue here. Nothing in the pocket. Oh, well, but that father screwed all right. It's father, I know. Why did he do it? Come along, Miss Blake. You needn't stay here any longer. No, no, darling. Oh. Well, I still can't understand. I can have a word with you, Martin. Yes? Oh, all right. Oh, uh, would you and your uncle uh, wait here for a moment? Of course. Uh, this way, Martin. All right, Martin. Why did you phone me? I wanted permission to see the body. Do you think it was John Blake? Oh, I can't tell, but uh, they certainly should know. Wilbur, from the start, you've been skeptical about the suicide theory. Why? Why? Well, I, uh... Who were you trying to frame? 
You're crazy. I'm not trying to frame anybody. You think he was murdered? Yes, I do. But not by you, of course. Oh, certainly not. But how do you account for the fact that John came to my office, signed the will he dictated, and gave me the letter to Hillary? He must have contemplated suicide. Are you sure it was John Blake who made the will? You think it was Hillary? It could have been. But John's temples were quite gray, and he had no trace of an accent. Hillary could have dropped the accent and grayed his temples. Go on. He could have gotten hold of John's clothes and hat. And after he left you, he could have killed John and thrown him in the river and left the evidence of the riverfront. And uh, why would Hillary kill John? Well, uh, well there have been several reasons. Maybe maybe because of Marcia. Maybe, well, several reasons. Did John Blake object to your engagement to Anita? No. Why should he? Anita Blake identified her father's handwriting on the will and the letter to Hillary. She identified the body, but you keep hopping about murder. Maybe she only thought it was his hand. You'd better be careful, Wilbur. If you're trying to make a murder out of this, you may hang yourself. What? How? False accusation. I've still got the will and the letter to Hillary. I checked the papers at John's office. The writing is the same. Maybe Hillary is clever at forgery. Maybe. Did you have the experts check the writing? Not yet. Well, then how can you tell unless you had a sample of Hillary's writing? I think if you have a sample of Hillary's letter. You found the letters from Hillary to John? Yes. Found a packet of them. It's on his desk. Good. Good. That will be what I was waiting for. Well, there they are. Several of them tied together. Now, I'll tell you something. I never thought John committed suicide. I think he was murdered. You... You do? Yes. And uh, before you go, Wilbur, I'd like to have a sample of your handwriting. Here, on this Hmm. Very well. Thank you, Wilbur. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, Sergeant, have you finished checking? Yes, Harper, I've finished. And uh, what's the verdict? Well, this is the cleverest bit of forgery I've ever come across. This would have passed any place if the question hadn't come up. So? This will and the letter to Hillary would certainly get by anyone as having been written by John Blake. Yes? When comparing the suicide letter from John to Hillary with this letter Hillary wrote from Australia, we notice a difference but a basic similarity. Would the fact that they're twins be the reason for that? No, on closer examination we find characteristics which couldn't appear in both letters if they were twins. Then you agree with me that Hillary must have written the suicide letter and signed the will. You certainly do. It's a tough thing to prove. I think you're on the right track, but, well, I... All I can do is let it through, eh? I'm afraid you'll have to work on forcing a confession in this case. Did you, uh, did you check all these letters from Hillary? No, just those on top. Well, I'd appreciate it if you checked them all. Just as you say. Now, what about young Wilbur Martin? Well, so far, I can't see much in him to worry about. But then you never can tell. I think Hillary's the man, all right. I thought that for some time. But I'll just phone out to the house and tell Wilbur Martin that we've uncovered the whole thing. And if Wilbur's in on it, he'll be gone when I get there. He can be picked up later. Okay, I'll check the rest of Hillary's letter. Go ahead. I won't phone out there till you finish. Ten minutes later, a startling piece of news breaks. The headlines are screamed by newsboys. Extras flood the street. And Wilbur Martin rushes to the Blake home and faces Anita and Hillary Blake. What is it, Wilbur? What's wrong? Yes, for heaven's sake, what's happened? You haven't heard? You, you don't know, Anita? No, what do you mean? Well, look. Look at these headlines. Famous building and loan crashes. Wilbur. Wilbur, what does it mean? I'll tell you. John Blake embezzled the company funds and they've gone to the wall. What? Yes, close the door. Oh, Wilbur, no, I can't believe that... I'm sorry, Anita. There it is, in black and white. Then that's the motive for his suicide. Why? Why? Because he knew he was caught. What else? He could have put the money back, couldn't he? Yes, but maybe he lost it by trying to make more to cover up the shortage. I don't think he lost. You don't? No. Nonsense. He must have. Why would he kill himself? Maybe he didn't kill himself. <laughs> no, please, Anita. Uh, you mustn't worry. Uh, oh, I, I know this is very embarrassing for you, but it isn't your fault. Let me take you away for a while. We can run down to Mexico till this blows over. Huh? You won't take her to Mexico. You won't take her any place. Just what do you mean? What's wrong with you, Wilbur? You're acting stupid. Do you want to go to Mexico with a murderer? What? Your father may have built the company, but I don't believe he lost the money. Wilbur. He hid it. And your Uncle Hillary found out where he hid it, and he set up the suicide to cover your father's murder. Crazy. Out of your mind. This doesn't make sense. I have all the money I need. Yes, you have now. You're a fool. Pack your things in here. 
I'll uh, phone the airport for reservation. You won't leave this room. Do you know what can be done to you for threatening people with firearms? I'll call the police. You don't need to call the police. You're on the way here now. Just talk to that detective, Mr. Harper. They've proved that you wrote the John's will and the suicide letter. You killed John, and you have the money. Wilbur, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. I know what I'm talking about. Get out. Get out. Get out. No, I won't leave. No one will leave till they come. Well, you got here just in time, Mr. Harper. Hillary was going to Mexico on the next plane and taking Anita with him. Mexico? Yes, he knows everything. I just told him about the handwriting discovery. John Blake stole the money from the loan company. Hillary here found out about it and learned where it was hidden and killed John. He's talking nonsense. Mr. Blake, Sergeant Evans here is the police uh, handwriting expert. He's examined the will and the suicide letter from John. He's also checked them with your recent letters from Australia. What? And your letters from Australia show a definite resemblance, the same characteristics which appear in the will and the suicide letter. You wrote the suicide letter? Definitely. We can get a conviction on it. Ridiculous. But uh, there's something else. The will mentions a painting of Marcia Blake and Edith's mother. Uh, Where's that painting? There it is on the wall. Just a moment. I hope you don't mind, Miss Blake. You're tearing off the back. Yes. Yes. And there you are. There's the reason why. Ah. Thousands in negotiable bonds. Then Hillary did know about the money. He did kill John for all this. I did no such thing. No. No, that's right. You didn't kill John Blake. Well, then, then who did? Look at these two letters from Hillary Blake to John. What are the dates? September and... In November 1940. Those were Hillary's last letters to John. Now look at these. June and July 1920. Do you notice any difference? All are signed by Hillary. But the, the ones dated 1920 are not at all like the ones written in 1940. Not the least similarity. We just discovered these old letters. The ones dated 1920 were written by Hillary. But the ones dated 1940 were written by John. John? What do you mean? You're under arrest, Mr. Blake, not for murder, because there's been no murder. You're under arrest on a charge of embezzlement. Embezzlement? And you, Miss Blake, are under arrest as an accomplice. Oh, but what are you saying? At first, we overlooked the earlier letters of Hillary Blake, but when we saw them, we knew we, they were not the same hand. We knew John forged the recent ones. Furthermore, I, uh, I checked with Australia. Hillary Blake died in Sydney ten years ago. This man is John Blake, posing as Hillary to escape the penalty for looting the company. Anita, you... you. Anita knew all about it. She's in on the plan. Oh, it was a clever one. And they might have gotten away with the phony suicide, but uh, he picked the wrong attorney. Oh, uh, here's your thousand dollars, Blake. But I'm afraid it won't do either of you much good now. Well, that's the story. John had gone to great lengths in laying his plans. But he made a mistake by failing to destroy the early letters from Hillary. And he underestimated Wilbur's intelligence. John had covered every point. He had even established residence in an apartment as Hillary. Had used the story of estrangement as an excuse for not associating with Hillary. And what of the body in the morgue? That's where they slipped again. The police knew the identity of the body. That was merely a trap laid by Alan Harper. Anita was too quick in identifying the first body she saw, too anxious. It was obviously not her father, but the finding of an unidentified body seemed so convenient that she jumped at the chance to declare it was John Blake. Yes, there's many a slip, Twix, but you know the rest. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. 
Next week, same time. I, the Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual story. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.